Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to create a horizontal box and whiskers chart or a box plot. Since Excel 2016, you were able to create a box and whiskers chart or a box plot, but that was only a vertical one. So if I go to insert and go to the chart here, box and whiskers, you can see that I have the ability to create a box and whiskers charts, but it's a vertical one. And it gave you the interquartile range, the median and the mean. Well, there's no way for you to change this into a horizontal one, but you can actually do it fairly easily. And I'll show you how to create a horizontal box and whiskers chart and also show you the mean in there. So let's get right to it. A box and whiskers chart is basically showing five things. It's going to show your minimum, your quartile group, your second quartile group, your median, your third quartile group, and your maximum number. Uh, basically five things. It can show six things, which I will show here. It shows your mean. But for the most part, it usually shows those five. So how do we get that? Well, first, what we can do is use the min function. So that's min. Press tab to open that. And select my range here. Press enter, and we've got our minimum of 421. That's the minimum value here. So the quartile one range, we can use actually a quartile function. Here in Q1, I'm going to use the quartile function, and I'm going to use the quartile.exclusive, and that's just going to calculate the quartile exclusive of the, me the median. And I'll put something in the description on why this could be used as opposed to having inclusive. So for the array, we're going to use that as the array again. Let's move this tip here. And then the quartile, what we want is the first quartile. So it kind of nicely puts that there. Press enter, and then we've got our first quartile. For the median, we can also use the quartile function, right? So we have this quartile function. We got our array, comma, and then the median value, or 50%. Click on that. Press enter. We've got our median there. And then for the Q3, for our third quartile, we can use our array again, and then comma, the third quartile, three. Double click that, press enter. And for our max, the opposite of min is going to be our max function. Press tab, select my values here, press enter. And then we've got 1306 is our max right there. So to create our horizontal box plot, basically it first starts out as a stacked, box, a stacked column chart or stacked bar chart. So when we look at these numbers, we're basically finding the deltas between the different values here. So if I go back to this tab here, up to Q1, it's going to be from zero all the way up to where Q1 starts. And from Q1 to Q2, it's a difference between the median and Q1, Q to Q3, the difference between Q3 and Q2. And for our bottom whiskers, it's going to be the difference between our Q1 and the min, you can see here it's B17 and B16. We'll see for the top whiskers, it is the difference between the max and then our Q3 value. So all I need to do is just plug those in. So up to Q1 is basically Q1, right here. Up to Q1, press enter. Between Q1 and Q2, that's the difference between the median minus the beginning of Q1, this, that, that first quartile, and then Q2 to Q3 is Q3 minus the median, right? And the bottom whisker is where we minus Q1 to the minimum, and the top whisker is where we minus the max to Q3 here. So now we have the values that represent our box plot, and our additional value that we want in there is the mean. All I need to do is type equals average, press tab, and select my range of values, and I have my mean there. Let's round this one. Let's make that a rounded number. We'll put that round, press tab, number of digits, zero, so we can have a whole number there. Now what we need to do is take this data and create our bar chart, our stacked bar chart. Now we need to take parts of our data and make our stacked bar chart. So I need these first three cells. Go to insert, and under the bar charts here, I want a 2D bar chart. 
This, not, this does not look like the initial chart I need, but all I need to do is click on switch row and columns and I have my stack bar chart. And you can see that the beginnings of my box and whiskers are there. Now, what I need to do is create my ends, the bottom whisker and the top whisker. First, maybe just remove this one. I'll remove this particular value because I don't really need that value. I just needed that value to kind of set in place where these two show up. Right click in terms of the fill. Let's make it no fill. So kind of make that disappear. You can see that it's disappeared now. Click outside of that. Now I need to add the top and bottom whiskers. Let's start with the bottom whisker first. Select the series here that we made uh, transparent and under the plus icon, click on error bars, click on the air triangle here, go to more options. And what we want to do is select our custom error amount. And that amount is going to be that bottom whisker. So click on specific value. We want the negative error value to change. Delete that. We don't need to do anything with the positive error value here. We select the bottom whisker, click OK, and let's do the same thing for the top whisker. We need to select our series three point here and under the arrow bar, click on the arrow here, more options, and for our custom, that's going to be the top whisker. That's going to be this value now, delete the positive error value and select the top whisker here, click OK. And we have our top whisker, right? So the bottom points to the min, which is 421 right here, the top here, it's going to be around 1300, which is our max here. So those are our whiskers. Now pay attention to the Y axis here. We are in the value of one here, but that might change later on if we're going to put in our mean. So that's what we're going to do next. Let's remove these grid lines first. I'm going to remove these grid lines. They're a little distracting. So press that, press delete, and we're going to add the mean. So you can see here from the initial box and whiskers chart or a box plot, we've got our five values. We have our quartile one. Well, in, in essence, it's basically our second quartile. We have our median. We have our third quartile. And then we have our end, our max here, our top whisker here. So this kind of tells you the dispersion of your data. So just for reading this, you can say if we made this really high, let's make this 3,000, right? You can see that we have a big whisker over here. We, we see that we have our max value out here. We see that our data, for most of our data, is pretty close to the median here, right? Let's control Z to undo that. So that's how you can kind of interpret uh, some of the box plots. Now, how do we get our mean in there? That is something that we have to put in as another chart. So I'm going to go click on that value, control C to copy, and just click on the chart in here and control V to paste. So here I'm going to change this value. We have a highlighted a mouse over it. You can see it's my mean. I'm going to change that into a different chart, not have it included as this stacked bar chart. So click on that, go under chart design, and under change chart type, we're going to change it to a scatter chart. So click on my scatter. Let's, let's find my scatter chart here. And whoops, it, it gave it a secondary axis, so I don't want that. Let's go back here. If I can reset that, I don't want a secondary axis there because it's going to put another axis, Y axis there. Select that. And now let's see if it let me do that. Click on XY scatter chart. No, it still did it, but we can change that later on. Now we just got to pay attention to where the median is over here. We can, we can set on 500 or we can do something else, but let's go through and create our, our mean there, which is shows up there. And we don't want it to show up there. We want it to show up over here. So we need to change that from a Y value to an X value. Click that and go under select data. And under series four, click edit and move this over here. Or we can just click equal and put that value here and change this value to one. So I'll just make this one in curly brackets, the number one close curly brackets, click OK, click OK here, and then we can just change this. I'm going to change my range here. Right click, format axis, and go from 0 
to, let's just zero to two, let's see. Zero to two, press tab, and then we have one in the middle. So that's fine, so it, it lines up with that. This is not a numerical categorization, this is category access. And this is more of a value access. So that's why I have these access ranges here. Close this, and we can just delete this. We can just delete that, and delete that access range there. And the last thing I might want to do is change that particular marker type. I don't want to have that circle. Right click, go to Format Data Series, and under the Series option, let's see if we can change our marker. Yes, go under the Paint Bucket, click on Marker, and under the Marker Options, built in, let's change that to an X, that X, make it a little bit bigger, maybe a size 11, change the color to black, Click close that pane, and now we have our box in whiskers chart, which looked like this, right? So that's the way that we can create a horizontal box in whiskers chart with a mean attached to it. Hopefully, Microsoft will add that particular option under the insert chart types here instead of having the vertical one give us the option also to create a horizontal one. That'd be nice, so we don't have to go through all of this to do that. But that's the way that you can do that. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.